Happy Thanksgiving! Let us give thanks. I get why all of these white moms love this recipe. Because you put meat in a loaf pan and that's it. <laughs> Onions are poisonous to ducks, if you didn't know. That's why he's growing. It's not gonna look pretty, no matter how you do it. It's a loaf of meat. You can't see it because it is out of focus or out of the shot. Thanks, mom. Oh, oh my God. After moving to Orlando, I discovered my love for theme park food. I can't get enough of it. So I figured it was finally time to fulfill my childhood dreams of being a TV chef. I'll show you how to bring the magic of the theme parks into your own kitchen. Some recipes may turn out great, some may not, but hey, we'll have fun along the way. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of RJ's Food Rocks, where today we will be recreating one of my favorite recipes um, that I've ever had at Disney World. Um, it's a little slice of home, not my home, some white person's home. <laughs> it is the Mom's Meatloaf at 50's Primetime Cafe over at Disney's Hollywood Studios. If you've never um, had a meal at 50s primetime. It's very cute. It, the whole thing is kitsch, full 50s kitsch. Like all of your um, servers are like, you know, it's like mom, your uncle, your aunt, and you're a cousin that's visiting and they're serving you family meals. I figured it would be a nice kind of like touch to do this for Thanksgiving because Thanksgiving's about like eating at a big table with your family. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> That's what Thanksgiving is. So um, I'm gonna tell you right now, Adam loved this recipe. My husband, who is from the Midwest, he was like, I just love meatloaf. And the, the when I was making it, I was like, I get it now. I get why all of these white moms love this recipe. Because you put meat in a loaf pan and that's it. <laughs> that's it, and you've got a meal, you've got dinner. I was like, wow, I really, I could, I really could just dedicate my life to being a housewife so I can make stuff like this. I could do it. I would do it. It's my new calling. <laughs> so I moved to America when I was um, 13 years old. So this was 2004. I specifically remember in eighth grade, it was Thanksgiving week. And we were all just like talking. I, it was kind of a loose week because you know, there's only like three days of school and there wasn't really anything in the agenda. So my homeroom teacher was like, um, RJ, this is gonna be your first Thanksgiving. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, actually know what it means. Like, I don't know what Thanksgiving's about, why are we celebrating it? Um, and everyone was like, what? You don't know what Thanksgiving is? Oh my God, that's so weird. Where are you from? Like, just all that. We stopped what we were doing and my teacher um, just popped in the Charlie Brown Thanksgiving movie. It's a big pumpkin, Charlie Brown. I don't know, I don't know what it is. The Thanksgiving one. And that's how I learned the story of Thanksgiving. In the Philippines, we actually have a version of a meatloaf. Um, we call it embutido. Embutido. It is like a meatloaf. You do it in like a, like a aluminum foil like pack. You actually like pack it in a roll. Ground pork, potatoes, raisins. I know, I'm not really a big fan of raisins, but I like it in savory stuff sometimes because it, you know, gives a little sweetness to to the meat. Um, and then in the middle, you actually put um, hard boiled eggs. <laughs> yes, like a um, scotch egg, but like in meatloaf form. So that's like the surprise. And that will be a really fun recipe to make someday. Maybe, maybe if I had a Patreon, what? I could do that recipe on there and, and show you my mom's meatloaf, which is my mom's embutido. So, um, if you're into that, uh, get me to 500 subscribers and I can start my Patreon. <laughs> so I found this recipe at allears.net um, and it's a really fun recipe and it's so easy. I kid you not, it is so easy. That's why I'm like, I should be a housewife. I made for this. And make sure you clean up your plate afterwards. 
because it's mom's meatloaf. So we're gonna start out by chopping up all of Friedrich. <laughs> We're gonna start with chopping up all of our, um, see, this is what you want. You want attention? You're gonna have to sit here. Anyway, you're gonna start with dicing up all of your vegetables first. You are using um, half a large onion or a full medium onion. Freed. Onions are poisonous to dogs, if you didn't know. That's why he's growing. And then you are also dicing up a green pepper and a red pepper. I think you can probably dice them a lot finer than I am. If you don't like them chunky, I don't mind chunky. Also, I'm too lazy to mince vegetables. But if you want to chop them up a lot smaller, please go ahead. If you want it to kind of like be the same consistency almost with the meatloaf, maybe, you know, so you can kind of like mince them a lot finer than I did. Do that if you prefer. So once you have all of your vegetables minced up like this, you, oh, where are you going, Frederick? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Bye. So the next step that you're going to do is you're going to put your meat in a bowl and you're basically just going to combine all of them. Now, do you see what I did here? I did not realize that I was out of focus from the camera. <laughs> the bowl is fully out of the shot. And I didn't notice that until afterwards. And I was like, I'm not going to refilm this. I'm not going to buy another pound of pork and pound of ground beef. We're not doing that, sis, okay? So the recipe calls for two pounds of ground beef and then one pound of ground pork. Um, using both of them really works well here because the pork, you know, has a lot more fat than um, the beef. So make sure you use a leaner ground beef um, if you're making this. So I re also realized that my bowl was way too small, so I transferred to a bigger bowl. And you know what the funny part is? I didn't even move it. I was fully confident that the bowl was in the shot, even if I moved, even if I transferred bowls. Who is Boo Boo the Fool? I am the Boo Boo the Fool. Once you combine all of this, you are going to add um, salt and pepper also to the meat. Um, you're also adding uh, Worcester. Worcester? <laughs> That's how you pronounce it if you're from Boston, right? Worcester? Or if you're from Massachusetts? Worcester sauce, Worcester, but it's not, it's Worcestershire sauce. Um, you're using two tablespoons on there and then salt and pepper. And that's pretty much it. Oh, I didn't even talk about the binding materials. That's what I'm doing right now. You can't see it because it is out of focus or out of the shot. But I am using four eggs here on the ground beef and the ground pork and also adding a cup of breadcrumbs. I just use like plain seasoned, like Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. Um, go ahead and use whatever you want. I don't know if panko would be good. I guess if you want a little texture, but it will kind of disappear anyway since it's, you're using it more as a binding ingredient. If you want to get really fancy and you know you have some stale bread that you really need to use up in your fridge or in your bread box, just um, take off the crusts of, those, um, of that bread and um, just blitz it in your little food processor and you can use fresh breadcrumbs. That's probably better, honestly. And then you can just season that with that whatever seasoning that you have. A Mrs. Dash, perhaps, if we're going full on like 50s housewife, <laughs> or just, you know, like Italian seasoning, oregano, thyme, rosemary, that kind of stuff. So once you have all of the meat and the seasonings and the binding uh, mixed together, use your hands. Um, it's the only way. Now you're going to add the onions and the green peppers. I did not do that pretty, but you know what? It's meatloaf. It's not going to look pretty, no matter how you do it. It's a loaf of meat. So just own up to it. Um, you're gonna combine all of that, and there you go. Look at how pretty that is. So you're using a loaf pan, right? And I could tell that mine was a little too big. I was afraid that it was actually gonna puff up and like overflow. What ended up happening was that because the pork that I had was a little bit greasier, um, there was just a lot of grease that accumulated in the bottom, so it didn't puff. I don't think it will puff. There's nothing in there to puff. So I think it was okay that I had a little bit of a dome on top and kind of like, you know, just kind of like shape it so it does kind of like dome up like that. I think that's fine. I played it safe and didn't want to do that so I cut off that excess in the top 
and they make for really good like hamburger patties if you want like a a Salisbury steak situation where you just you know fry up some patties that's what I did just to kind of taste it so um, or you can make them into meatballs maybe you know just some ideas the next step is make the meatloaf glaze now this is really good I think a lot of people just assume that it's ketchup um, it's not just ketchup it's about other stuff too um, so that's probably why people if you're if you're like not a fan of ketchup maybe you wouldn't want to make this glaze so you're using ketchup here and then you're adding Worcester again <laughs> What's the sauce? Um, and you're using Dijon. So I actually had a little bit of Coleman spicy mustard too. So I used both of them because I like a little spice. Um, so I did gray, gray poupon and then a little bit of that spicy Coleman's mustard. And then I'm also adding brown sugar here. That's what's making it sweet. That's what will make it a glaze. That'll kind of help caramelize, caramelize um, when you pour it on top. So that meatloaf that you put in the oven we put that, I completely forgot to tell you. Um, we put that in a 350 degree oven for an hour. So after an hour, it should look like this. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> it's not, and that's okay. See, look, you can see the grease is kind of like pooled in on the bottom. That's okay. That's okay. That's from the pork. Um, so really just um, try to make sure that if you don't, if you don't want that, um, just try to make sure you get um, some lean cuts both from the beef and the pork um, So you're basically brushing that meatloaf glaze on top and then you're putting it back on the of inside the oven for another 10 minutes just to really caramelize um, Caramelize a crust on top Now it's time to take it out I made some grilled asparagus for the side because I feel like I should have some sort of green with a meatloaf and I actually also roasted some potatoes in the oven and there it is. There is the meatloaf. What? It took like five minutes to preheat the oven and then mix the meat in a bowl and then put it in a loaf pan? You guys, being a housewife really works out. <laughs> anyway, enjoy this meatloaf as much as I did. We made meatloaf! Okay, I'm so excited for this meatloaf. It was so easy to make and I'm very, very excited. I love meatloaf. Here we go. Look at that. Oh my God. Thanks, mom. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's so meaty and decadent. And the sauce is really good. Uh, I mean, if you're a big fan of like pseudo barbecue sauce, the sauce is really good for you. Put some of that glaze. It's just so hearty. Oh my god. You know, all of these suburban white women, they know what they're doing. This is some good, this is some good stuff. Don't forget to eat your greens. I made these potatoes mainly for the picture. I'm pretty sure they're not cooked. They're almost cooked. <laughs> it's a pretty solid meatloaf, man. This is America, right here. America in a bite. Mm. Oh, good. Oh, good. I feel bad for mine and Adam's arteries because we're eating meatloaf every single week now. <laughs> Try it now. Do it. It's super easy. Took about an hour and a half to make. Once you've made it in the loaf pan and you just put it in the oven, you're set to go. Try, try, try this meatloaf. Mom would want you to have this meatloaf. Mmm. <laughs> so, it's so good with that glaze. Man. Man, I'm good.
Thanks for watching another episode of RJ's Food Rocks. You can find me at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram and on Facebook. You can also subscribe here on YouTube so you can get my videos every Friday. We're trying to get to a subscriber goal of 500 before the end of the year, so that's coming up. So if you know anyone that would be interested in the show, please let them know, you know, spam their emails. If you just need kind of like an overall landing page for everything you need to go to, just go to rjfoodrocks.com. 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 Look, I'm wearing my Beko Chen shirt. So anyway, thank you again. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you are celebrating Thanksgiving weekend with your families and friends and everyone you love. I hope you are celebrating it with so much love and, and light and laughter and optimism and happiness. There, that's my required Thanksgiving plug. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week with another video. Bye.